Hi, I'm Kevin O'Flaherty. I hope you enjoyed this Learn About Law video and podcast presented by O'Flaherty Law. If you need some help, please feel free to give us a call at 563-503-6910. That's 563-503-6910. We offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have several geographic locations for your convenience. Thanks again for watching and listening. Hi, this is Andrew with Learn About Law, and in today's video, we'll be talking all about Iowa worker compensation law. So there's a good chance that if you work for a company in Iowa that has some form of workers' compensation. Workers' compensation law in Iowa requires most employers to provide benefits to workers in the event they become injured and or disabled on the job or in some way over the course of their employment. So what types of injuries are going to be covered? So the definition of injury under Iowa workers' compensation law is going to be fairly broad and includes almost any health impairment not considered the normal wear and tear experienced by the body over time. Certain diseases and hearing loss attributed to employment may also fall under workers' compensation. Uh, so for example, cancer or epilepsy due to exposure to harmful chemicals over time or in a single instance would likely be covered under work, uh, Iowa workers' compensation law. Typically, pre-existing conditions are not going to be covered by um, workers' compensation unless it is an acute aggravation of the pre-existing condition with disabling symptoms. So how do you know if you're eligible for workers' compensation in Iowa? So if you're an employee working under a contract of hire or whose employment is principally localized in Iowa, you're more than likely going to be eligible for workers' compensation benefits. <clears throat> there are going to be some situations where coverage is limited or non-existent, but these are usually isolated cases. And more information is going to be available through the Iowa Division of Workers' Compensation. Uh, independent contractors, partners, and other limited liability employees are normally not covered under workers' compensation and must, much, uh, must purchase their own insurance. So let's go ahead and switch gears to the benefits provided under workers' compensation in Iowa. First off, we've got the medical benefits. So you've got one, payment for medically necessary treatment, two, payment for transportation to and from treatment, three, reimbursement for lost wages due to being at medical treatment, four, if there is a dispute over reasonable and medically necessary treatment, the providing physician or specialist cannot seek payment from the worker. So the other half of work comp benefits are going to be the disability benefits. Um, the amount of weekly compensation for the employee can be up to 80% of the employee's weekly spendable earnings, which is the amount available after deducting payroll taxes from the gross weekly earnings. The factors considered when determining the amount of weekly disability benefits are going to be things like marital status, exemptions, and average gross weekly earnings. So there are a number of different disability benefits that I'm going to cover briefly here. But keep in mind, because each worker's compensation situation is unique, yeah, it is best to discuss your situation with a qualified attorney. So first we have the temporary total disability. This deals with an injury resulting in more than three calendar days of total disability. The three-day waiting period becomes payable after 14 calendar days of no work. Second is a temporary partial disability. Here the employee returns to work, but at a lesser paying job due to injury. Um, he had, uh, has a similar time period as temporal total disability. Um, next is going to be a healing period, a disability benefit that covers the time from the injury, initial injury to a medical decision made regarding the employee's resolved, continuing or permanent disability. Then there is a permanent partial disability, a benefit based on the degree of permanent disability. And then you've got scheduled member disability, which is a benefit associated with a part of the body and based on a predetermined set of guidelines. Then you're going to have unscheduled or whole body disability. That's going to be a more general benefit that is not based on a specific predetermined guideline, but rather is taken as a case, uh, case by case basis and must be evaluated on a number of medical and work related factors. There's also permanent total disability. This, is, uh, this benefit is paid out as long as the employee continues to be permanently disabled. Second injury fund is a benefit associated with employees who have one disabled body part and then acquire a second disabled body part on the job. So who pays the benefits and chooses medical care? 
If an employer purchases, uh, purchases insurance through an insurance company, the insurance company will pay the, uh, the worker's compensation benefits. If the employer is self-insured, the employer will pay the worker's compensation benefits. Um, so generally, the employer has the right to choose who provides medical care in a worker's compensation case. The employer can also opt to let the employee seek out their own medical care, but still oversee the process and possibly deny as they see fit. If an employee is dissatisfied with the employer's choice for medical care, he or she may ask for another provider. And if an employee is dissatisfied, dissatisfied with a provider's disability rating, he or she may seek a second opinion from another provider as well. So workers' compensation cases can be time-consuming, frustrating, and costly during a time when you or a loved one may be in pain due to the work-related injury. Having a qualified attorney on your side can streamline the process, ease some of the responsibility, and allow the injured worker to focus on getting better. So as always, thank you for tuning in. Hi, Kevin O'Flaherty again. Hope you enjoyed that presentation of Learn About Law presented by O'Flaherty Law. If you need some help, please give us a call, 563-503-6910, 563-503-6910. Again, we offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have several geographic locations for your convenience. If you found this helpful, we'd love it if you'd subscribe to us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts or watch your videos. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizeyourbusiness.com. And visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.